Hey. Well, the uh, 962 body has arrived. Um, yes, what can we say about it? Uh, kind of reminds me of a 80s Lamborghini replica. Yeah, needs, yeah, way more work. Like, and it was ridiculously expensive as well. It is just, yeah, <clears throat> whatever. <clears throat> there are no body that has got a decent set of moles that doesn't want a billion dollars for it. So I suppose what we got is what we got. It's a front clip, and it's the rear. So you know, a huge amount to the rear, really. <laughs> Just a bit of room for lights on, that's about it really. This particular body doesn't even come with this panel here. It's kind of missing. <clears throat> so yeah, still got lots of setup. It does come with a couple of parts of the underbody. You can see the start of the diffuser. It starts at the front underneath there and then works its way back. Albeit this panel here is completely flat, which is kind of unusual because the diffuser's normally gaining height. We have yet to figure that one out. Probably end all of that going in the bin. <coughs> but uh, yeah, uh, radiator exit there. Entry in the doors. Obviously, this is a mahusive hole in the doors. If you drop that door in. <laughs> okay. So you have all your cooling entry and exit kind of there. It is really reduced to go into there. You can see quite easily where the air is going to be quite easily forced into those two areas, which is cool. Um, overpriced roll cage, um, probably quite handy to have at this point. Um, it does actually fit oh, I'd say reasonably well to the bad body. I know how quite quite how to put that or whatever. <coughs> um, plans we do have are not particularly very good. Most of them have gone, well, to be thrown away. But I did at least get the height of where the mounting tabs for the um, roll cage should be. It's about 11 and a half inches on the front and two foot to the mounting points at the rear. So I've got a rough idea of where the chassis sits. And I've just basically plonked the body on. Emphasis on the word plonked because it's, let's say, uh, um, well, in need of a lot of positioning. This panel here should be parallel and flat with that. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. Um, yes, close, but not really close enough. Oh well, there you go. <coughs> uh, a good friend did tell me that the body was, uh, yeah, in need of a lot of TLC. Um, it said 300 hours, if I remember rightly, um, to put it right. I can easily see where that came from. If not, it might have been 300 hours for an expert fiberglass guy who probably does it full time. <coughs> so, yes, mm, interesting. So, <coughs> grafting said motor into said body. Going to be fun. Um, did at least confirm the idea that we had. Um, it actually copies somebody else's, <coughs> the guy that we got this from, to use an original Porsche bow housing to bolt to the engine and then we'd have the clutch and start the motor and stuff into that. So everything pretty much stays Porsche there, albeit, uh, I know the orientation would be the right way off as well, so everything pretty much stays Porsche. Um, <coughs> and then behind that we'll make a large adapter plate that'll go behind, that'll go across the back of the car and then we'll effectively become similar to how this plate is here. The chassis will mount to it and then the bell housing will mount to that. So if you can imagine one of these bell housings here from a Porsche, but instead of being on this side of the plate, it likes to be on this side of the plate. So it pushes the engine forward 13 inches. Uh, then that plate will be wider because obviously V8 isn't very wide. Flat six is quite wide. <coughs> so, um, Yes, 
So we'll have one of those plates behind it. So we have differential housing, plate, and then a sequential racing box behind that. So, um, And then the front mounting here, which this one is kind of a weird looking aluminium plate, which obviously is the rear mounting for the Porsche, because obviously that would be the back end of the car. Um, that plate itself will uh, be removed and we'll build another unit which will be bolted directly to the back of the chassis and um, where the fuel tank is. <coughs> so, yes, fun on the 962 front. Um, oh well, hey ho, it's, uh, um, it, it's a glass body, we've got the windscreen, we've got the cage, so I can use those two as a date and point and build the chassis from there. Um, only kind of changes I'm going to make to the chassis that I know of so far. The steering rack on a normal, um, normal chassis, 962. This is the wheel center line or axle center line at the front. Your feet are behind that, which is kind of cool. My feet are a couple of inches behind it, which is even better. Um, if nothing else, for uh, uh, road regulations, you need to have your feet behind there. So um, 917. Pfft. Yeah, 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 awkward to road register these days. <coughs> 962, not a problem. Um, the chassis actually comes forward of there. So you can imagine the, the suspension bolts down to the outside of the chassis, unlike mine where the bulkhead is basically behind the axle centre line. So basically you are completely back there. I'm nearly a foot. My, foot, my feet are nearly eight inches behind the wheel axle centre line. This chassis here and that bulkhead becomes on the this side of the wheel so this bulk so your feet area takes up or well, the pedal box area takes up that then your chassis comes to here and then what bolts onto the front of the chassis is a obviously racing car very light weight tubular frame which will bolt to the front of the chassis like that and has the mounting point there this is all lovely aluminium also bent out of shape, we won't go into that. <coughs> um, so normally has a steering route behind, um, which gives you more options for uh, Ackerman adjustment, because the, uh, um, yeah, I'll just won't explain that one right now. <coughs> but doing that, basically the original 962, you had to put your feet underneath the steering rack to get to the pedals. So you can imagine where your foot was. Pedals here, the steering rack's kind of here and below the level of the bottom of your toe. So technically, as you pull your foot out, you have to twist your foot out to get it past the steering rack. And the rack comes out of here. There's a great big dirty, great big hole there. It's a race car. Why do I need to see the water coming in? Yeah, <coughs> that's not gonna happen. <coughs> um, so basically, I'm gonna put the steering rack in front. Um, I have plenty of room um, to, to get the Ackerman that I think I'm gonna want, so I don't, really give a monkeys about getting it behind. Put it in front, gets it away from the pedal box, gets it away from anything that's gonna be a pain in the ass. It means I can also lift the uh, steering column slightly so that also gets away from the pedals. It gives me a lot more options where I want stuff. <clears throat> then I have a great big hole inside of the chassis that the steering rack has to come out of. Um, so the rack's gonna go in the front. <coughs> um, so yeah, we've got some upright redesigns to do. Uh, I'm going to try and make an ambidextrous upright that's going to do front or rear uh, to make it simpler. Uh, I've seen lots of cars do it that way, to be honest. It does man, just kind of make things uh, a little easier. It'll probably still be handed, um, but effectively it'll make it, I can use it on the front or rear. <coughs> yes, so that's that. Um, still looking for a good auto electrician. You all make Steve in Britain's a bit too far away for him to pop over and do stuff, but um, I have a full car wiring loom system for this, and I need somebody to basically break away the stuff that we don't need from the original GT3 loom, because I have the full full body loom. Uh, pretty much everything from the Porsche, from the front bulkhead, so it hasn't got the light uh, wiring for the front, but it's got everything else. So, uh, yes. Any Calgarian <coughs> electrical budding engineers, please by all means give me a shout. If you want something interesting to do the weekend, let me know because uh, I've got the whole car loom sitting in a box waiting for somebody to play with. <coughs> I 
and we're going to try and keep the original car loom because then we can use the original ECU, we can use the original dials, and even it comes with a funky Porsche key uh, ignition switch. So we want to keep that as well. Let's try and keep all of that Porsche if we can. But obviously, I don't need. I need to delete stuff like the ABS, like the uh, various other bits and pieces that we don't want. So um, we have some fun. Anyway, <coughs> 962 arrived. See you later.